In the early part of the 19th century, our young country still faced immense challenges in its relationship with Great Britain. Tensions were high in the maritime realm as English naval ships and privateers, in an effort to bolster forces in their war against France, boarded American merchant vessels on the high seas, seized their cargoes, and forced some mariners to serve as subjects of the king aboard British military vessels. Attempting to manage the growing tensions without military action, the U.S. government passed a series of laws forbidding the importation of British goods and implemented embargoes against Britain and France. But the laws and diplomacy did not have the desired effect. In 1812, President Madison declared war against Great Britain. As an essential component of America's fleet, the U.S. Revenue Cutter Service went to battle. The ensuing accounts of preparedness, initiative, courage, and leadership serve as powerful lessons for the Coast Guard's missions today. In June of 1813, Revenue Cutter Surveyor, at anchor five miles south of the mouth of York River in Chesapeake Bay, was attacked by the British naval ship Narcissus. Surprised but prepared, the crew of Surveyor fought gallantly. The battle was lost, but Captain Samuel Travis's sword was returned to him the next day with a note from the senior officer of Narcissus. It said, I am at a loss, which to admire most, the arrangement on board the surveyor or the determined manner by which her deck was disputed, inch by inch. Such courage on the part of these American cuttermen called the fleet to bold action. In the fall of 1813, Revenue Cutter Vigilant would answer that call. Prior to deciding to make a port call in Providence, Rhode Island, the British privateer Dart had successfully cruised along America's sea lanes, capturing upwards of 30 small American merchant vessels. To put an end to the foray, Revenue Cutter Captain John Cahoon offered the services of the Vigilant. With word that the British privateer was near shore, Cahoon placed extra men aboard his cutter, immediately set sail, maneuvered vigilant into the dominant wind position, fired broadside, and boarded Dart, seizing her cargo and crew. The swift victory instilled confidence, and revenue cutters continued to aggressively seek out the enemy. During the summer of 1814, revenue cutter Eagle set sail from New England in search of a British privateer. In sight of their target, but without the advantage of wind, Eagle was attacked by British naval ship Dispatch. Captain Frederick Lee chose to beach Eagle on the north shore of Long Island, and his men returned fire aggressively. As Eagle suffered increasing damage to her decks and rigging, Captain Lee ordered deck guns dismantled, taken ashore, and then moved to higher ground for a gunfire advantage. Local militia joined in the fight, and only after every round of ammunition was exhausted was the Eagle seized. The war finally came to an end several months later, in December 1814, with the Treaty of Ghent. The crews of revenue cutters proved they could lay alongside an enemy, exchange gunfire, find victory, defend their decks, and sacrifice in service to their country. We, the United States Coast Guard, carry with us today their many hard-fought lessons and examples. Today, may we stand our watches vigilantly and with the courage and commitment demonstrated by our predecessors in the Revenue Cutter Service during the War of 1812.